publicly before they released all the pictures to the family. I mean, to the public. Yep. They went ahead and released a couple of pictures to the family and then released a whole bunch of pictures to the public. And in the pictures, it actually begins to raise more questions like, yo, why is her top down? Yes. Why is her top down? Why is her, her, her uh, private areas, uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, exposed. Why is her breast exposed? It, explain that to me. They have yet to actually explain anything. Okay. And they're calling it a sad tragedy and accident. Cause she was, um, um, uh, left in the freezer. And that's what killed her. But in the pictures though, <laughs> yes, bring that back in the pictures though. Yes. In the pictures though. Okay. I see her pants pulled down. I see a um a tattoo on her pelvic area. Yes. So how how does it not look like she was attacked? Her shoes off. Her ankles are bruised. Her she has scratch marks and bleeding marks on her foot, which meant that if she wasn't kept in the area, she would have been bleeding all over the place. But because she was kept in the freezer, she uh that she ended up being cold and, and she didn't leak. You did. Her hair was wet. Yes, true indeed, because she was in the freezer. But there was also hair all over the place as well. You feel me? It, and then the way her hands cramped up, it looked like she was fighting. It looked like she was trying to, you know what I'm saying, hold her from being, uh, you know, hold her, defend herself basically from being attacked. Y'all stop playing now. Don't, y'all, don't let me get a, don't let me pass the bar exam, baby. Oh, yes. The Queens is going in. Sorry, I got a little heat about that. Anyways, NBC New York, um, what they got to say about um, it, you know, they're basically reporting that the Rosemont Police Department released all the photographs to the public with the exception of the few select photographs they wish to share with the family before they were released. But they only released a few to the family. I just don't even like that. You playing funny. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm looking at all these bruises all on her foot, looking like she got a tack, shirt up, pants down, one shoe on, one shoe off. You know, like a, a shoe got scrape marks on, like she was dragged. No, no, mm -mm, no. Y'all ain't finna play that. And then in the footage, if you ever see the footage um, that is showing that she's walking into the kitchen area, okay? There is a mug on the kitchen counter, okay, in this hotel, which means that somebody was there and trying to stay awake, okay? Okay, not the woke that we woke, okay? Then she walking into the kitchen area, and, I mean, she gets snatched up. That's what it looked like because, you know, that long hair, that that Remy, that thing, it, you know, when you, when, you, when you turn, it turn with you. So when she was walking and she got snatched, that Remy tossed in the air and you could see that in the video you could see that <sighs> y'all don't get me started <sighs> I, I i don't like that now <sighs> anyways just mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. anyways in other news yeah, y'all know I got to bring some other news to y'all. Some alternative political news that they don't want y'all to know on the low, low, on the low, low. There was mad political unrest at Florida. Y'all didn't know that. Y'all ain't know there was mad political um, arrest in Florida and that there was mad protests going on due to the fact that the damn white nationalist um, leader, Richard Spencer. I hate that. I just, I, 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 I don't even hate the word. I don't even use the word hate. And I hate the word hate. But I, I damn hate this fool. Damn, I would say the N word, but it wouldn't culturally be right. He don't deserve that damn word. I mean. Yes, I accept the the N word is a culture word. Anyways, um, yes, he he, it all started when he when it all started and played out when he orchestrated propaganda. It was his latest attempt to get you know cameras and all this around him, and he did it at the University of Florida. Okay, um, I'm so irritated with this man, the white nationalist leader, and this this also this art article is given to you by articles. Dot L dot com. Yes. Do you like my little accent? Mm. Get it, Ziti. Anyways, the white nationalist leader, Richard Spencer, almost ensured the physical separation of Spencer's group of political extremists and those who would gather to oppose their presence. Yes, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me say this is this is serious. There was folks dressed out there in neo-Nazi attire walking through the crowd of protesters ready to get it. They said that these fools was ready to get it. And let me not mention, remember on last episode of Hip Hop and Politics, I gave y'all some information about um in 
Charlottesville where they actually rally they rallied together as well now Richard Spencer's little extremist group they they had a little rally in um Charlottesville now now they're doing one in the University of uh, of Florida and I'm talking about these the white folks these neo Nazis are ready to get it they said that they was ready for trouble and also it says that the University of Florida spent six hundred thousand dollars on security do you understand that they're they're damn college students going hungry not even saying nothing why they in college because they hungry they come from other states their parents can't afford that food that meal plan be expensive as hell shout out to csu for them cheap them cheap meal plans but yes unless you want this beautiful wonderful affordable uh highly intelligent school like mine plain state university then you cannot afford the meal plans it is expensive Okay, and not to mention there are still kids at our school that suffer from that. It's relatively small. Please donate to the Clayton State University uh, pantry closet. Yes, but I'm just saying, shout out to my Clayton State University people. The uh uh-uh, chill out with that. Yes, my podcast, my school runs and reigns. Anyway, yeah, you know what I'm saying? To be spending $600,000 on security for your school. Just for, just for, for this white nationalist Richard Spencer to come out and actually raise hell. Well, folks weren't having that. Folks weren't doing that. They was It was SWAT teams out there, heavily armored. I mean... And there were civil rights groups out there. I mean, there were there were barriers. It was a few hundred protesters now. Um, you know what I'm saying? That you know, watched the neo Nazi walk away from Spencer's speech inside the Phillips Arena and towards them. But reporters rushed into the place to document the scene, and it was dozens of students that held up their phones to record the theater. Chaos erupted, of course, when the man wearing the SWAT swastikas on his shirt walked past the barriers and into the parking lot of protesters. It was like punching a hole into a harness's neck. And then sticking around to see what happens next. Damn. I know that was deep, huh? Thrill. <laughs> Hell yeah. Screaming, spitting, uh, and a whole bunch of nasty neo Nazi, uh, um, I mean, people grabbed the man dressed in neo Nazi garb and it was ugly stuff. I mean, it was like they was going in. And then um to make oh, to make matters worse, this is comparable to of what happened at the uh in our in Auburn in April at the University of um Virginia in August. So now that makes two incidents where you know these these people, these national extremists are looking for problems. And you know what I'm saying? Like under the guise of the free speech protected by the First Amendment, political extremists are using public universities and state resources to manufacture and mass communicate scenes of racial hatred in America. Seriously, that's what I personally think. Like I mean, on an intelligent note, y'all know y'all queen got to come with a little some some just in case y'all thought I was too ratchet to do the news. I can do it my way. And in other news, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going, people. Yeah, you know, I got to keep you fresh, funky, dope. Got to give you what's going on. And I mean, really, if if I wasn't the one that was giving you some of this news in the way that I'm giving you some of this news in, then I don't think you know what the hell is going on with the world. But y'all remember Steve Bannon? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all don't remember Steve Bannon? Bannon? All right. Well, um, if y'all didn't know a little bit about him, okay, his background, he comes from a newspaper, y'all. He's like executive chairman on a newspaper, okay? Um, that's called like, uh, hold on, cause I got it, I got it pronounced in a British accent. All right, Breitbart. I don't know why I had to say it like that when I googled it. That's the pronunciation that it gave me, so that's what I roll it with. All right. So Breitbart is a magazine, um, is a newspaper, and uh, when he stepped back from being in Trump's cabinet, he went back to the newspaper. And as you know, if you in a position of power to run the media and the news and be biased in the news to shape people's opinion, then nine times out of ten you gonna do it. Don't even play. Don't even play like y'all ain't want. To go ahead and shape people's minds about certain things. <laughs> Hello, I, I I do it all the time. No, I'm just playing. Okay, I'm not playing. Y'all know y'all listen to me because y'all like my opinions and my and my judgment. And I think the guy's taking it on a on a real personal level because he's messing with politics and how people should vote. And I think that's it's like voter discrimination. Come on, we got over that with the voting act of the voting acts of 1965 when all black people were allowed to vote and they weren't allowed to put any barriers, any you know, uh, voting discrepancies against us uh, in order, you know, with intentions not to vote. We got past that. 
that with the Voting Rights Act of 1965. So this man is still doing this, but on a global and national level and just in politics, all because he hates the big Trump, which we all do. But I mean, we ain't going to go take it out on the newspaper, honey. That's that's like million dollar rand. Well, this is what he's doing at Breitbart newspaper yes he's literally giving all the shine to trump's competitors that's gonna uh be coming up in the national election and he's taking away light oh i like it dude he's taking away light from trump but he's just doing it in a really hateful way and if you don't know bannon he's not too democratic bannon it is a serious uh, republican conservative like he's seriously conservative hmm Mm -mm -mm. I mean, the man is seriously racist. So USA Today is actually, you know, (sighs) talking about how, you know, hey, Bannon and his allies are trying to get against Trump and all this and all that. And, you know, Bannon's meeting with Andrew Serbian, who works as a senior advisor to a pro-Trump advocacy group and is also close allies of Bannon. But that's all, you know. You know, because he was behaving in meetings as reporters who had been invited to observe rather than participate. They didn't ask questions. I mean, it's like he's trying to get at Trump's Trump's people to show how bad Trump's doing so he could use him as allies. Mm-mm-mm. And this is what. um, Oh, God, it's just terrible. This is what the guy said that met with Breitbart magazine while i don't think the meeting was reported on by breitbart at the time it gave birth to further stories told by usa capitol he pointed to grimm's interview with boyle on breitbart's radio show a few days after the initial huddle on october 14th bannon appeared at the conservative values voters summit attacking senate majority leader mitch mcconnell republican of kentucky and threatening to run candidates against any republican lawmaker who didn't denounce senator bob corker a republican out of Tennessee for criticizing Trump. Breitbart live streaming the proceedings and Bannon met Boyle for an interview after his speech. Breitbart had never denied that it is a conservative news outlet and is being accredited for fueling the movement that elected Trump. Bannon left Breitbart last summer to help run Trump's campaign. He went with Trump to the White House and resigned from Breitbart, but returned to the news organization after he was forced out of the White House. But Bannon seems aware of the importance of, um, publicly separating the media outlet and his own personal strategy, at least to some degree. Mm. Oh, someone in their feelings, honey. Oh, Lord. Mm. Someone is in their feelings. Uh, golly, even in our government, we is petty. Can, can I get a meme on that? Can I get a meme on that? Uh, in the pool pit, in the pool pit. Can I get a, can I get a, can I get a meme? In the pool pit, in the pool. I, I don't know if, yo, legit, y'all gotta see me on camera. Don't worry, people. I'm getting all my equipment together because I be wild and litty. Y'all be, yo, y'all will catch hell looking at me on, or, ooh, it's gonna be fun. They, oh, things are coming together. Things are coming together. Just wait till the end of our show so I can tell you our sponsorships. Anyways, in international news, Indonesia revives its communist ghost. Oh, Lord, don't say that. Oh, golly. Just, Lord, mm, Lord, if they become communists again, I mean, especially when the anti-communists and the and the Islamists are both allied with a larger third force that is ultimately driving much of the current resurgence with the military. I mean, it's going to be a strong military with pious Muslims in them. I'm just saying like... Golly, it's going to be, it's going to be, I mean, okay, so let's say devil's advocate. If I was in Indonesia and I was, and I was like communist, I'd be like, hell yeah, we about to be banging fam. We about to, fam, we, we about to be on it. Like, you know, we, we, we about to be our own. We about to be dependent on our own, do on our own, all about our own, you know, no, no globalization. We ain't dealing with the mother folks. We about to be strong fam. For the mill niggas, cause I ride for my niggas. Hey, I'm telling you. But on the other side, Papi, you don't have enough resources, Papi. You don't have enough cocaine on the table, Papi. You're not running enough money, baby. You gotta slow down. All right. One thing I noticed that Marcus Garvey did when he was trying to, you know, establish the black community in Tulsa, Oklahoma, was that he began making transportation line because he knew that we would not be able to get majority of our resources for our community if we wanted to be segregated and independent on our own with our own banking system our own business that's why they called it the black wall street so we began banging 
you dig, in transportation. There's a lot of things going on that e- Indonesia does not have, especially when they're meeting poverty line. You feel what I'm saying? So they're going to have to get it together. But, I mean, 